Rattenborough, world traveler and presenter of animals, back for another exciting day of slideshow, show and tell. Remember my friend Hilda the hippo? We're actually like her. Do you remember how? We're all vertebrates. That's right, vertebrates have backbones. And animals without backbones are called invertebrates. Because you and I are both vertebrates, we'll talk about vertebrates first. Let's take a look at the hippopotamus. When you look at the outside of an animal, you can't see the backbone because it's on the inside. But sometimes you can tell where the backbone is. Under a vertebrate skin, there's a ridge. This is the backbone or spine that starts near its head and runs all the way down its back to its tail. Find your backbone again. Remember those bumpy bones? Each bump you feel is a separate vertebra. They form a row from your neck all the way down to your back, all the way down your back to your tailbone. Your spine serves a very important purpose. Your spine protects your spinal cord, that large bundle of nerves that sends messages from your brain to every part of your body. Let's look at the backbones of the five animal species to which I, to which my five friends belong. We've seen that a hippopotamus has a backbone. Next, let's look at one of Ebenezer's fellow egrets. Its backbone or spinal column helps it hold its head up high and protects its spinal cord. Do you see the black dots I put on the picture? Like all egrets, Ebenezer couldn't live without his backbone. All birds have backbones or vertebrae. Snakes don't look like they have backbones, do they? Even though snakes slither or slip and slide along, they absolutely do have backbones. A snake's vertebrae, like Anna anacondas, run the length of its body and swing low to the ground as its muscles help it move along the ground or climb up trees. A pair of ribs is attached to each vertebra, protecting the body parts inside the snake's body. All reptiles have backbones. So you can't always tell from the outside whether an animal is a vertebrate with a spine or backbone or whether it's an invertebrate. Well, how about fish? Would you say fish have backbones? The answer is yes. All fish have backbones, just like reptiles, birds, and mammals. It's very tricky to see, but if you took an x-ray of its body, you would see that all the other tiny bones that make up the skeleton of the fish are connected to its spine. Paolo told me that even though all fish have backbones, some fish, like sharks and stingrays, have backbones that are made of lighter and more bendable cartilage instead of hard bone, allowing them to be more flexible and travel more quickly. That leaves amphibians. Take a look at my animal friends one more time and pay close attention to the toad next to Tabitha. It's hard to tell whether when you look at a toad's body that there is a backbone inside. Now tell me, do all toads have backbones? Yep, they sure do. They certainly do. Toads are vertebrates too. All amphibians have backbones. That means that all five of the animals you've seen today are vertebrates. They all have backbones. The question I'm going to present to you students is this. Do all the animals on earth have backbones? What are your predictions, boys and girls? We know that mammals, which includes hippopotami, me, you, birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians, are all vertebrates too. Have we covered all of the animal groups on Earth? Aha! Trick question. If you said no, your predictions were correct. Do you remember if there are more vertebrates or invertebrates on Earth? Well, look at this image that I shared, <coughs> shared with you earlier. Remember, more than 95% of all the animal species are invertebrates. And insects are the biggest group of invertebrates. 
and there are still so many invertebrates yet to be discovered and classified. Mm. As you can see in the image, vertebrates are actually only a tiny, teeny group here on Earth. Because we tend to think and talk mostly about vertebrates, mm -hmm. we sometimes forget that most of the animals in the world are actually invertebrates, mm -hmm. and most of those are insects. Think how many insects there must be on our planet. They make up three quarters of all the species in the animal kingdom. Can you name a few of the many animals in the insect group? Can you find the fly, the wasp, the beetles, the cockroaches, the ladybugs, and the butterflies? Well, those are all insects. There sure are a lot more species of insects than there are species of amphibians or mammals or birds or fish and reptiles all put together. Even though insects are by far the largest group of invertebrates, they are not the only invertebrates. Here's another question for you to think about. Close your eyes and pretend you're a taxonomist for a moment. Can you think of any other animals without backbones? Here's a hint. Instead of internal vertebrae, these animals have an external or outer hard body covering. The largest group of invertebrates is made up of arthropods. Insects make up the largest group of arthropods. Another large group of arthropods includes the arachnids. Spiders are arachnids, and so are ticks, daddy long legs, and scorpions. Insects have six legs and three body parts. The ant in this image has very long antennae. They almost look like another set of legs. In comparison, arachnids have eight legs and two body parts. Instead of having flexible internal skeletons, all of the arthropods wear a tough exoskeleton or protective covering on the outside. I bet you can recognize some of these common examples of insects and arachnids. A crustacean is another kind of invertebrate and also a type of arthropod. Crustaceans have exoskeletons and usually live in water. Copepods are the smallest of the crustaceans. They are barely visible, but they are a very important source of food for fish in the ocean. Can anyone think of other animals that are classified as crustaceans? Well, some of the more common crustaceans include shrimp, lobsters, fiddler crabs, and blue crabs. These animals all have a hard exoskeleton, which protects their body and keeps them from drying out. Have you ever seen a crab? If you eat a blue crab like this one or a lobster, you've probably removed the hard exoskeleton to find the tasty meat inside. Snails, jellyfish, and earthworms are also invertebrates. Other spineless creatures include coral, sea anemones, and sea stars. Many invertebrates are small and hidden and may not even seem like animals, but they are by far the largest group of animals populating the earth. What a lot of ways there are to classify animals. The purpose of this classification system is to understand each organism better by the characteristics that make it unique. Vertebrates and invertebrates are two types of animals in the world of taxonomy. It's just one way of classifying animals, but I think it's a very helpful way, don't you? You and I may not look alike or much like Ebenezer, Tabitha, or Anna, but we have a very distinct similarity to one another. We all have backbones. Look at this chart that shows how a group of familiar organisms are related to one another. On the top row, you can see a group of living organisms, a house cat, a mountain lion, a tiger, a seal, a turtle, a grasshopper, and a tree. In the next row entitled Kingdom, notice that one of the living organisms is no longer included, the tree. The tree actually belongs to a different kingdom, the plant kingdom. 
This row now shows only organisms that are part of the animal kingdom. In the next row, titled phylum, the grasshopper is no longer included. All of the rest of the animals represented here are vertebrates, part of the chordata phylum. In looking at the class row, you may notice that the turtle is no longer included. The turtle is in the reptile class and all of the other animals shown are mammals. In the row labeled order, the mouse is no longer included because it's not a carnivore like the other animals shown. What's true about all the animals in the next row, family? That's right, they're all different types of cats. In the genus row, you can see that the house cat and the mountain lion are more closely related than the tiger, so he's been left out. And the very last row represents one specific animal, a species of house cat. This process of starting out with many animals and ending up with just one is called the process of elimination. As we went down the list, we eliminated or removed any animal that no longer had anything in common.